The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Television viewers around the world watch daily translations of American soap operas. So you should hardly be surprised by the condition of the planet. According to one recent news article, the Ten Commandments were broken a shocking 317 times during just three hours of afternoon television soap operas. Adultery, coveting, killing, stealing, bearing false witness. They violated nearly every commandment, this research team said. On All My Children, One Life to Live, and Guiding Light, three soap operas among the most ignored rules, was the Eighth Commandment, which forbids lying. It was violated an amazing 41 times in those three programs, three hours, one afternoon. There was so much lying, it was impossible to tell who was lying and who was actually telling the truth. But it was clear that lies all used to manipulate other people were involved in just about every scene, the researchers said. Coveting, or the desire to have more than you've got, was intense. The second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, was broken a total of five times in this study. The only time God's name was mentioned was when it was being taken in vain, the researchers said. God's name was used only as a curse or as an exclamation in the script. Only the third commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, was never clearly broken in that one afternoon of soap operas. What is the secret of living a really good life? Is it just keeping those commandments, following the rules, the laws, and regulations of your society and your country and your county, your town or city, or is it more than just what you don't do? Could it be it's what you do do? Not just what you don't do in a situation, but what your positive intentions and actions are. God has a will for your life and the power to live it. God holds you responsible not only for what you have, but for what you could have. Not only for what you are, but what you could become. God can help you grow and fulfill and actualize your innermost potentials. A crisis often reveals great people in small places and small people in great places. But God's best gifts are not things, they are potentials. And the kingdom of God is within you. And with God, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible, said the Master. With God, all things are possible. That single truth should remove every limitation from your thinking, should reveal a vast horizon of potentials before your life. And when you go into conscious and willing and deliberate cooperation with God, great things can and will take place. Because with God, all things are possible, and you can be part of that. If with all your heart and soul you will seek the will of God, great souls prove their greatness by making progress where other people are only making complaints. Every morning, praise God for the possibilities of that morning, but make some use of those possibilities before the morning is gone. Great opportunities come to people who make great use of small opportunities. Are you using what is before you this moment, this instant, where you are? Not only strike while the iron is hot, but keep the iron hot by striking it. God has a wonderful will for your life and a work for you to do. You can learn to make more opportunities than you find. When you go into active and willing partnership of cooperation with God and pray the greatest prayer which will ever pass your lips and come from your soul, your will be done. Saying to God and meaning it with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, your will be done that your will is committed, consecrated in prayer, in worship, in meditation, in commitment, in praise and glory to the will of God. Listen to these words. He reached the heights to rest in peace. High up on a mountaintop, this epitaph marks the grave of Dr. Elisha Mitchell. He lost his life in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina trying to discover what was the highest peak in those mountains. That peak was later named in his honor, and his epitaph... He reached the heights to rest in peace. Makes you think of the words in the grave of one old alpine guide. I quoted this on another broadcast. He died climbing. But that's how to live as well. Aspiring, questing, yearning, searching, living 
life to its fullest as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be. Years ago, three young men journeyed into an at that time hitherto unexplored section of Australia. They had traveled far into the interior. And they'd seen much of the vast desert there. When they decided to turn back, well, I still had enough food and water for the return trip to survive it. And it was then that one of these young men, according to the diary, filled up a bag he was carrying with some soil from that desert. And his friends said, but why are you doing that? And he replied, I'm going to plant this. I'm going to take it back home and plant it in my garden in the United States, and I'm going to see what happens. After he returned from his trip, that bag of soil was placed in his garden. And this young man watched that soil from day to day and watered it and cultivated it. Within a short period of time, some small green sprouts appeared. Then strange little plants grew, some of which blossomed into beautiful bright red bell-shaped flowers. Small vines with fern-shaped foliage bore deep orange-colored flowers. Some of these plants were unknown even to horticulturalists at that time. The seeds possibly had lain dormant for ages, dropped from flowers which had bloomed when that desert was at that time a garden. But suitable conditions had brought them back to life and to beauty. So it is. God, too, can bring forth something new in your life, in your heart. God can transform you as it is written. Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And again, know you not that you are the temple of God, for the Spirit of God dwells within you. It is written, the Spirit in man is the candle of God or the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward places. There is enlightenment. There is the light of life in knowing God, loving God, and loving people. There is joy in this, eternal joy. There is happiness. Many people worry and are unhappy and sad, distressed and filled with anxiety because they're obsessed with the past and the future so much that they cannot discover and live the peace, the joy, the happiness of the present moment, the here, the now. The peace of the soul consists in total surrender to the will of God. And when you fully surrender your life to God, you will find an inrushing, a release, a joy, and a gladness such as you have never known before. You'll be fearless of life, fearless of death, fearless of eternity. But there can be no peace of soul if pride is reigning in your mind. God must be God, not you, but God. If you allow your worries, anxieties, and careworn questionings and your doubts to brood in your heart, they will destroy the serenity and the peace of your life just as tiny gnats and mosquitoes and flying insects and biting bugs could ruin what would otherwise be an earthly paradise of flowers and gardens and promenades in a clear sky and blue ocean. Still, you could be so irritated by these small things in the same way worries, small fears, and anxieties can so degrade and compromise the joy of your life that you don't live fully as you were created to live in the gladness of being a son or daughter of God. Said Jesus, these four powerful words, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Trust God. Give your life to God fully, not half-heartedly, not partially, not with footnotes, asterisks, and escape clauses, but totally, wholeheartedly, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The two great commandments, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. When you live in this kind of love and this kind of faith and hope, there's joy in it which will conquer everything. There's spiritual victory in that. I remember one time as a boy in Kansas, this is an unforgettable recollection of mine. We had a community concert series in which singers and musicians were brought in to this little western Kansas town. And all afternoon, metal folding chairs were put up by the town fathers and mothers in the Ben Grimsley Gymnasium, which was named after my father, who was a coach there. It was the largest building in our town. It was turned into a concert hall for that one evening for the community concert series every month. And as a little boy, one time I heard the blind pianist Alec Templeton play a magnificent composition by Ludwig von Beethoven. When I stopped to think about the fact that this blind pianist was playing a composition by a deaf composer, because in the last years of his life, Beethoven could not hear. He was deaf. And here was 
Alec Templeton, a blind pianist playing something written by a deaf composer, Beethoven, and producing in that instant a moment of aesthetic beauty which was breathtaking. Then think how God can use your life. In spite of your problems, your difficulties, your drawbacks, your handicaps, God can use your life. If you'll give your life to God, God can bring forth that which would seem to be impossible. Whenever you or I or anybody throws himself or herself into the doing of something that is bigger than we are, some great grand purpose of God, there is a miracle in the making. For with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. And if you will give your all to God, God will take your all and make of you even more than you are. Then praise and worship God. Give thanks and live thanks all of your life. Thanks to the God who loves you so. Worship is the blossom of prayer. And there are multitudes of people who will cry, God be merciful, but who never say, God be praised. Praise God and worship God. Never achieve a success or some achievement in your life, some moment of victory without giving God praise for it. And recognize you do not live to yourself alone and for yourself alone, but for the glory of God. Thankfulness is the very anthem of the angels. Let every furrow in your life be sown with the seeds of thanksgiving and praise and worship of God. Give one great hallelujah from your heart that you're alive, that God has brought you to be, that you are a son or daughter of God and a brother or sister to every person on this planet, black, white, red, yellow, every hue and shade and color in between. And you and every other person on this earth were put here to learn how to love, to live in love for God and love for others, to forgive, to learn mercy, to seek beauty, truth, and goodness, to live spiritually. And eternal life begins for you the moment you begin to live by these eternal values, truth, beauty, and goodness, and in love for God and love for people. If you don't get everything you do want when you pray, then just think of all the things you don't get that you don't want. And praise God anyway, no matter what happens, praise God. Whether you're up or whether you're down, praise God. Whether things are going successfully or unsuccessfully, praise God. Whether things are going as you planned and expected or not as you planned or expected, <laughs> praise God anyway. In all things, give thanks. In all things, give praise. In all things, worship God. Because God will bring you through no matter what you're going through this moment. And out on the other side, there's not only light at the other end of the tunnel, there is eternity and a brilliant future beyond my description and your imagining. If only you will have faith in God. Give your life to God with totality of commitment, and all things, all things will become as new for you. Write to us, will you? I want to hear from you. If you've been listening to this broadcast, it's some 30 years now we've been doing this broadcast. Maybe you've been listening for 30 years, or maybe you haven't. Perhaps this is the first one of these programs you've ever heard of the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast Series, or the On Campus Series, or any of these programs we've done. Whichever, write to us. I want to hear from you. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, freedom from fear, getting to know God, growing spiritually, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death, what happens when you die, how you can be unafraid of life and unafraid of death. Write to us for this free literature. No cost, charge, or obligation. When you write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell out mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.